Forbidden is the free pathfinding library used to create this video. Join the Discord for it and other models for free. So go ahead and go to the description. You'll see Forbidden V2 packaged and add it to your game. It's just a pathfinding library, which means we're still writing our own code for how the NPC works. However, when we do that NPC code, we're going to be using the Forbidden pathfinding system just to get the pathfinding rule. So once you have it added to your game, go to Avatar and add in a character avatar and add a script inside of it. Once you do that, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna get the services you need, which for this is gonna be replicated storage. And you're also gonna need the player server. Do that, you can go ahead and make it look nice if you want. And you're gonna go down here and you're gonna do references. The references, you're gonna need two things. Go ahead and make a doors folder. And for every door you want, so door one, door two, make another folder and just put your door in it. Make sure it's the same paths and everything. And I'm going to show you why that's important later. But if you want to follow this structure and even the door I have, I just went to the marketplace and got a random door. It took like 30 minutes to integrate with Forbidden. I went down here. I have Mari 230899 working door clickable. I didn't change anything about the script in it. And that's the beauty of working with Forbidden. It is that easy to integrate models this random door model i grab because i thought it looked cool and we're going to go back to our script we're going to say doors folder is equal to workspace wait for child doors just doing a wait for child just in case and i'm going to go ahead and do libraries so now this is the part where we're getting the forbidden library you can name it whatever you want but I'm going to do forbidden AI is equal to require rs forbidden dot AI. And then I'm also going to do config. Th this is where we're going to set up the config. It's going to go more in depth in other videos, but I'll just give you the general gist. Get config and I'm going to go ahead and do my MP. Also going to add my MP up here because I'm going to reference it. Cool. Script dot parent. And I'm going to do MPC. So when I do this, I can now go ahead and alter the agent info, which might be the radius, the height. These are all the default settings that Roblox provides. Forbidden provides a little bit more. And one of the greatest things that Forbidden provides out of any of the default settings here is the pathfinding link reached. By default, if you do not set the pathfinding link reach function, it will teleport the character so that it can continue the pathfinding. What we're doing is we're overriding this function. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to say config.visualization.enabled equals true. That will create little waypoints so we can see what's happening. And config.hooks.pathfindinglink reached is equal to function npc instance and waypoint, which is a path waypoint. So, just something to keep in mind. When done, release the hold. What this means is, until we return true, the loop that Forbidden has that moves the AI around will not continue until we return true. So keep in mind that no matter what we're doing with our pathfinding link, we need it to return. Now, what is a pathfinding link? Pathfinding link is something that Roblox includes by default. The idea of it is, let's say we have this solid wall. It appears to be solid. There's a door. However, we know that the AI should be able to pathfind through the door. What we're going to do is we're going to make two parts. Part one, we're going to place on one side of the door. And part two, we're going to place on the other side of the door. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to group this into my door one folder. And I don't need to name them or anything, but what I will do is I'll disable can collide and make sure they are anchored. Go ahead and make sure they are. And I'm going to go ahead and just change the color. And I'm going to change the material to medium, just to make it a little bit easier to see. And add an attachment in each. You don't need to change anything about the attachments. Go ahead and add those attachments and add a pathfinding link in. When you do so, go ahead and connect attachment zero to any of the waypoints. Attachment one to the other one. You'll see two arrows form. 
these two arrows if i go ahead and make this slightly transparent you can see the two arrows connect both sides of this door to together i'm going to go ahead and i'm actually going to space it out a little bit just to make sure that the ai definitely knows that it can get here and it can get there so now we have to connect this waypoint to that waypoint and to do so we're going to go ahead and we're going to understand what information waypoint is giving us so the ai is going to walk to this waypoint and it's going to be like i need you to get me to the other side of that door so the ai stops here and it provides us with waypoint information it provides us with a label which for us we're going to go ahead and we're going to check if it matches a waypoint dot label and door so this would be that if our pathfinding link has a door label which to show you this pathfinding link has a label we want to set it to door one or whatever you're calling your door to show you why that is important if we want to open this door inside this particular door model if you set open the true it will open the door so i'll do doors folder is equal to find first child waypoint dot label i'm actually going to go ahead and check if this is real if this door does not exist then or we could just do if door is equal no it would not matter either we're going to warn no door in doors folder with name and we're going to do waypoint dot label and that so what this is going to do is going to tell us if we have a way uh, a waypoint or a pathfinding link with a label that doesn't match our doors folder so we know that we have door one and door one this should always match i'm going to make sure it returns true and ends this return true is just kind of to see if it will fix itself which you want in your game you really want the ai to just try to fix itself if it can so that's why i have return true and i'm going to go ahead and then i'm going to say door dot door or door dot so this actually gives us this folder right here so we want door dot door dot open dot value is equal to true what this is going to do is this script actually detects when that value changes and opens it not alter a single thing about that as door came so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to use that now we know that the door opens maybe you want to place in an animation here i'm not going to do that in this video because suck at animating it would take me through. but you can go ahead and you can just play an animation right here if you so let's say animation and then i'm just for now i'm just going to say doing animation but then we also want to move the ai this is the critical part remember the ai doesn't know how to get to the other side of the door we need to tell it how now what we're going to do is we're going to say it actually can just move to the other side of the door what i'm going to do is up here i'm going to get human I'm going to get my humanoid. I'm going to say human move to waypoint dot position. What it is saying is wherever it's trying to go. So it stopped at a starting point. Wherever it's trying to go is the position and the pathfinding link it's using is the label, right? So this final position, right? If it's here, it's going to be right there. I want to move directly to that position because I know that the door is going to open. So I'm going to do human dot move to finish equals wait what this is going to do is before it returns true because keep in mind we want to wait until it gets to the other side of the door we're going to wait for that move to go then we're going to do pathfinding link finish just to let us know that it used that pathfinding link and it satisfied so if we go ahead and we wait i forgot to start the pathfind that might help you can do AI dot or forbidden AI dot smart pathfind NPC to we'll do a task dot wait free player which would be players get children one this is a really bad way to do it it's just for testing I'm also going to do config dot tracking dot enabled equals true once again this is strictly testing. And when we do that, what this is going to do is basically going to track the player. 
and this just gets the first player and we wait three seconds because if we didn't wait three seconds it wouldn't load the player in time so now if i hit test and we wait you'll see that it go ahead it went and it opened the door for us perfect so it went ahead and stuck through the door now there is one more suggestion i have if one issue you might find is that if a player were to shut a door on its face, um, it will get stuck because that's just what will happen. So if it gets stuck, it does have unstucking algorithms and it will try to fix itself. However, there is a simple way to make sure that doesn't happen and improve the performance of our AI. We're going to go ahead and get collision groups. If you don't have them, just make a new page, search up collision groups, thing that pops up, add tools, search up collision groups, add it. When you have collision groups, you can see I already made two. Just add group and make two. Door, which I'm going to go ahead and add this one to. And NPC, which I'm going to add this one. My doors cannot collide with NPC. So that means in theory, it could just walk right through the door. But it doesn't. And we're also going to make the NPCs not collide with NPC. So the reason we do this, NPCs colliding with NPCs creates other issues. They think they get stuck, and it's really bad. By not making them get stuck on each other with collision groups, you can add a repulsion force, which acts like they're bumping into each other, but they're not. You can look up videos on that from people that are smarter than me to explain repulsion forces, but as a general concept, they basically are like magnets of opposite, of the same polarity. They push each other apart, and they cannot touch. So... Now the AI could hypothetically walk right through the door. That's what these collision groups do. But it won't, like I said, and all it does is make our AI more stable. And that's how you get your NPC to work with doors. If you have any questions on how to get your door to integrate or other things to integrate with Forbidden, please join the Discord and ask questions. There will be other videos being posted based on your suggestions. And if you have anything else, just let me know in the comments or in the Discord. Anyway, it's no cost to you, and I would really appreciate if you let me know your thoughts, especially on what to add next. Peace.